And so I ask people, well, what scares you most? Are you most afraid that you are going to die young and wealthy and never enjoy that wealth? Or are you afraid that you're going to die a really long life and run out of money? And if you can start thinking about that as a proxy to knowing when you're going to die, we can then look at your financial life and start making real decisions about how to spend today versus defer gratification for tomorrow. I always use my dad as an example of this, right? So my dad, if I had asked them that question, my dad actually knew he was going to die young. He told my mom this when he got married to her. Really? And so for my dad, he was afraid that he was going to die young and never really enjoy himself or use as well. So my dad made decisions very much predicated on that. Like when he got out of fellowship, he could have taken this big, expensive private practice job, but he knew he wouldn't like it as much. And he went to work for the VA, the veteran system, and made about half as much money. But he had more time to be with his kids and more time to do the things he liked in medicine. My dad loved photography. He loved travel. And he pursued all of these things. You know what he didn't do? He didn't save a lot for his retirement. I mean, he did all the important stuff. Like he got life insurance. He made sure we were all taken care of. He, in fact, pushed my mom to go back to school and get an MBA because he's like, what happens if I'm not here? But he wasn't worried about living a long life and not having enough. Me, on the other hand, I've always thought that I kind of live long and, and, you know, outlive a lot of the people I loved. So for me, I'm not as worried about not enjoying my wealth today. I wanted to make a lot of money, maybe even grind it out a little bit because I foresee a long life and I want to have lots of years to enjoy that wealth, right? I don't mm. want to run out too quickly. So if you play these scenarios out in your mind, you can actually start thinking about how we answer that question. How much do I spend today? If you were like my dad, maybe let's say you make $100,000 and 50 of it goes to your fixed cost. So you have 50 left over. If you're like my dad, you probably use 40,000 of that to YOLO. Live today, buy the most expensive camera, go on vacation. You take the other 10,000, you put it in savings, you invest it, whatever, in retirement savings. So let's play that out. Let's say you're right and you die young. Well, you kind of used your wealth to live a good life, to support the people you love, to do all the things you want to do. Let's say you're wrong. Well, if you're wrong and you live to 80, guess what? You're not going to retire at 40 or 50 or maybe even 60. But you know what? You've been using all that money to YOLO this whole time. So you can continue doing that. Save your 10,000, enjoy your 40,000, live life. It's not a bad life. Even yeah. if you have to work till 60 or 70, you're kind of doing what you want. Yeah. So either scenario works. Change it over. Let's say you're me and I'm worried that I'm going to live to a really old age and I'm not going to have enough money. So I would do the exact opposite. 50% goes to set expenses. I have 50,000 left over. I'm going to save 40,000 and use 10,000 to YOLO. Play that one out. Well, if I'm right, you know, I'm going to be able to retire early. I could stop maybe at 40 or 50 and live a really fat, wonderful life full of purpose, identity, and connections and do whatever I want. What if I'm wrong? Well, if I'm wrong and I die young, that's kind of the worst case scenario of all four. But at least I was using some money towards YOLO. I didn't think this was likely. Yeah. It was unexpected. But hey, I was using some money to do what I wanted. And the truth is I died with this dream that I was going to live this wonderful retirement. It's not that horrendous either. And honestly, you'll be you'll be dead, so you so, won't even, you yeah. won't regret it. <laughs> you All won't this know. is also though predicated on the fact that no matter who which of these people you are, you protect yourself. You get life insurance, sure. you get disability insurance. If you live in a place that's prone to natural disasters, you try to get the right insurance to yeah. cover you and your business, etc. Being smart is being smart. Who which whichever one of these people are. So that's the only rational way I know to figure out that YOLO deferred gratification continuum because it's impossible unless you happen to know exactly when you're going to die. You're going to probably get it somewhat wrong. Yeah. But this is the best approximation I know of. I like that. And and you don't have to be all or nothing. I think people, humans tend to be like, yeah, you have to be the person that doesn't eat. You know, who to- what, what, what's the analogy? They put their bread at the iron at the, you know, toast their bread on an iron at the hotel room so they don't have to go uh, out to eat. Like you can be that person, which sounds terrible. Uh, <laughs> or you could be. You know, yeah, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. It just says, hey, like, you know, my, my parents, I think, are a really good example. My dad and mom growing up, you know, they didn't make a lot of money. Dad, meat cutter. Mom did daycare in my house with a Dairy Queen for a little while. And they generally spent almost all of their money on vacations for our kids. Like, I mean, they, 95% of it probably, if it wasn't fixed expenses, went to vacation or 
stuff for us, activities, memory building things. They, they invested heavily in memories growing up. Now they got older and the, thankfully they bought some houses along the way, not real estate investing, just the house they lived in. And then it went up in value. And when you ha- buy a house and hold on to it for 30 years, I mean, you upgrade every five or 10 years, but they just got more and more equity. So now they at least have a, you know, a, a nice little chunk enough that their retirement with their 401ks and all that will be just fine. But my parents like invested in the memory and and I love that idea that they didn't scrape and tell us we could never have new clothes, but they also weren't stupid. They bought a house, they invested, I mean, in their own real estate. And so I think, I think, uh, you know, I owe my parents a lot for that. And now like, you know, thankfully they got kids that make a lot of money and so we can take care of them. So they kind of got the best of both worlds, but we use these investing terms and we only tend to use them with investing, but we should probably use them with other things too. So, your parents invested in memories and those memories compounded and paid dividends mm, yeah. into a less regretful life. Yep. Right? So when they're on their deathbeds, if they have not died already, yeah, they're still here. They will be able to look back and say, I did do the things I cared about. I yeah. didn't put the money away just to put the money away and let that season of my life pass me without enjoying the kids and the time together. Other things compound. Yes, money compounds and compounding is incredibly beneficial for building financial wealth. But our experiences, our love, our joy, all of that compounds too. And if you're skimping out on that early in life, you're going to find yourself in trouble as you get older. Yeah, that's so true. Have you lost all your wealth today? All your money, all your wealth? Mm-hmm medical license out the window. I don't know if something really bad happened to you. Uh, You're broke. You're starting over. What do you do? First of all, how long would it take you, do you believe, to become a millionaire again? A millionaire. And how would you do it? I think it'd take me 10 years and undoubtedly I would do real estate. I don't know any other way to build wealth that fast. Mm. And I don't love real estate. I had a bunch of doors. I went through COVID. We had rats. We had cockroaches. We had tenants that were a pain in the ass. I did the typical went halfway and didn't really own being a landlord, et cetera. So I sold a lot of my real estate. But if I had nothing, it is the most powerful fastest way to build wealth, especially if you don't already have skills, right? So I have skills as a doctor. So if I can use my ability as a doctor, I could just go and be a doctor. I find a way. Um, I could be a writer and I probably could make a living in it, but it wouldn't be a great living. Real estate because of leverage is, I think, the fastest way to either be financially independent or become a millionaire, especially when you're starting from zero. I think when you're starting from a few million, it's really easy to make another million, right? Um, I don't see any other way that's that quick and easy. I agree. I always say real estate is the most, it's the fastest of the secured ways to build wealth, right? Like, yeah, you can start a startup and get lucky and sell it for $10 million and whatever. That's a one out of a thousand shot, most likely. But you do a decent job at real estate and you're halfway intelligent, a million dollars in 10 years, it'd be hard not to get that. You got to put in the work. Yes. You 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 do have to do it. like what I know now, I would have to do it much more aggressively than I did, but I know how to do that. I yep. just didn't because I was busy with other parts of life. I was yep. busy being a doctor and running a business and eventually pursuing my purpose and things that were really exciting to me. And so I didn't put the time in I should, but I know how to get there. And again, I, I think for someone who has zero money, I, don't, I can't think of anything more pow- powerful than that. Yeah, that's really good, man. 